Hello, um, my name is Vinay Jusri and I'm the CEO of Several Nines. And this is a quick talk on the high availability database architecture for Nextcloud. Uh, so we basically the, the Nextcloud database, it, it stores everything apart from the binary files, right? So anything around metadata, uh, users, uh, what files there are, um, you know, what, what tokens you have used, uh, anything from file history, all the activity is recorded in the database. So it is a pretty important database. Um, so why should you cluster your database? Um, well, a slow database, it will slow down Nextcloud, right? That's the big problem. So imagine loading a file list that takes more than half a minute, right? This will be frustrating for your users. And that happens if your database is slow. Uh, in terms of uh, users, if you have more users, it means you will have more activity on the database because there's a considerable amount of activity being logged for each user. So every time you add a new file, you share a file um, with, with you know, other users, you set permissions. Even if you move files between locations or if you take a directory and move it to another location, there's a lot of updates uh, that, that actually happens in the database. And also all the desktop clients are continuously pinging the database for updates. So the database needs to scale, right? Uh, the other thing is data integrity. Now imagine if your database is corrupted, the, the actual client, you know, the, the desktop client, uh, when, you, when you basically, you know, boot it up, um, the synchronization client might think, oh, there are no databases, right? Because it's empty. So actually it might delete your local copy of files, right? So, so there are, a number of these edge cases where you could run into trouble. Uh, now, obviously, you know, it is, it is possible to rebuild metadata from files, but it works for file systems, not if you're using object storage, right? So eventually, I mean, you know, you, you come to the conclusion that if you have no database, then there is no next cloud, right? Um, you can access your local desktop files, uh, but you can share, you can collaborate. And, uh, and obviously, yeah, th this is a problem. So high availability, um, there's a lot of dependency on the database when it comes to the, the, the availability of, of the Nest Cloud platform. So what does the architecture look like? Um, on top, you have your multiple instances uh, of, the, of, you know, of, your, of your Nest Cloud instances. And basically, you're talking to the database through a proxy layer. Now, it is possible to have things like HA proxy or, you know, max scale is the one that's actually recommended in the documentation. We actually would like to, you know, put forward proxy SQL, uh, which, is a, which is a nice proxy that also works quite well. Um, you have an active proxy SQL and a backup uh, proxy SQL. And basically you have Keep Alive D running on both of these hosts and Keep Alive D manages a virtual IP. And that IP is floated to the backup uh, instance in case the active proxy SQL dies, right? Now, then it goes to the, to the database cluster. Now, what is MariaDB cluster? Um, most people know how basically, you know, single instance MariaDB works, right? It's, it's one single in instance, and then you have a master slave setup. Now, MariaDB cluster is a, is a way of actually synchronizing multiple MariaDB databases, right, across multiple nodes. So in this case, we have three nodes in the cluster, right? And uh, all these have exactly the same data. So as you see here, this RW, uh, it means read, write. So basically we're writing, we're reading and writing from one of the nodes and the other two nodes, which are actually read only, um, they have exactly the same data. So you could actually send uh, write, node, write requests to all the nodes, but we found that this could uh, bring problems in terms of deadlocks within Galera, right? So you don't want to have contention between the nodes when, 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 uh, when for example, the same uh, rows are updated across multiple hosts. So this is why we recommend that you actually send your write traffic to one of the nodes and then you read from the other nodes. Um, and this, this, is, this can be done very easily through proxy SQL, right? And then you have something called a MariaDB asynchronous slave. Basically, we are decoupling one of the nodes from the, from the cluster 
And this is because um, the, the cluster is as fast as the slowest node, right? So if, for example, you run a heavy backup or you run a lot of reporting on one of the Galera nodes, that node will slow down and that will actually, uh, you know, propagate to the other to the other nodes in terms of uh, slowing down the rest of the cluster. And you don't want that, right? So, so basically having an asynchronous slave, which is decoupled from, from, from the Galera cluster helps you. Um, and then obviously you have cluster control. So cluster control is what actually, you, you know, um, what you can use to, to set it up and to basically uh, manage this setup. Now, why management? Obviously, there's a lot of um, uh, talk in the community about, you know, uh, GDPR and making sure we have data privacy and 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 you know data protection and and uh, and you know things like that. So so the database is something that's important in terms of you know management. So data security and making sure you encrypt your data, uh, access control, who has access to the database, who can do what, right? Backup and retention, um, monitoring, uh, upgrades to make sure you don't have old software lying around. These are all important things. And finally, we have uh, two other talks from uh, from my uh, you know colleagues at several lines. One of them is about failure with databases, right? Your MariaDB cluster will fail, and why? This is done by Christoph. Then the other one is tip to drive MariaDB cluster performance. That's it. Thank you. Bye for now.